Well, welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and this is a video response to Swifto. He was out walking his dog, and he, th he decided to do 10 more gaming-ish type questions. I'll put a link below if you wanted to answer these two. I love these questions because they're, they're out of the norm. And I just thought, well, since Swifto was out walking his dog, having a nice daily kind of little stroll, I thought, well, I'm going to go outside too and just check out the great outdoors. Uh, my wife Dee was going to join me on this, um, but she's instead decided to play Metro Exodus 2033 uh, Redux. So. Uh, but she had some uh, answers to these questions herself. I might just um, insert them in here. However, with uh, no further ado, let's get to Swifto's questions. Question 1. What game would you like to see get a remake or sequel? This was really hard. Uh, I was really quite surprised because practically every game that I liked from yesteryear has actually had a sequel. I mean, there were tons of games I would have mentioned a couple of years ago, Star Control being one. I mean, there was a, there was a sequel to that back in the day, but I would have thought, you know, oh yeah, a modern rendition of Star Control would have been awesome. There is one. Uh, I would have said back in the day, Thief, because again, there were sequels to that, but nothing recent years. Then they made it for the PS3 and the PS4, so that also doesn't really count. Um, almost everything I'd like to see get a sequel has actually got one, or a remake. But I did kind of come up with an answer, and it's a little bit of a cheat. Very, very small amount of a cheat. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing more of, perhaps a sequel or whatever, more VR missions like the one that came in the Star Wars Battlefront first game, when PSVR first launched and they made that X-Wing experience. Man, that is phenomenal. I don't think it's going to ever happen. Now, it's worth me noting, as I'm recording this, E3 is going on and I've looked at the EA announcements, I don't see anything, but unless they tack on the end of the whole E3 show, oh by the way, there's going to be a more Star Wars VR experience, I'm going to look like I have egg on my face. So assuming there was no such announcement, um, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, when they made that VR game or that add-on for First Battlefront, uh, it was really just to advertise that Rogue One was coming out, and that's why they made the game. And it was, I don't know if it was a proof of concept or something, but it's phenomenal. Like, it's so good. If they would only make one where you can fly other ships or, or I don't know, take the TIE Fighter game from yesteryear and put that into that interface... I would just love that. I would love there to be a game like that. There is No Man's Sky is going to get patched soon to be able to play with PSVR, so that'll sort of fill that, tick that box, but no, no, no. If, you, if I could have any sequels or anything along those lines, something along the lines of a sequel or an add-on or more Star Wars specifically, VR missions for PlayStation VR, I would love. Swifto's next question was, what's the bestest, baddest boss you've beaten? I couldn't really come up with an easy one of these, because I've played a lot of games from the 90s and onward where bosses were kind of a thing. I don't know that any of them really stood out to me. I mean, I've defeated them and I moved on and that was great, but I, none of them really kind of left a memorable impression on me. So I have an answer and a half, and they're kind of cheats, I don't know. Swifto said there's no rules, so you can make it up as you go. My answer is going to be, well, okay, the half answer, I'd almost say Sinistar. Now, he's not really technically a boss, because you don't meet him at the end of the game. All of the little drones that you're fighting against in the arcade original, where they're collecting the rock bits... They're mining to build Sinistar, and then he comes and he chases after you. I've done a video about it. Sinistar, to this day, scares the heck out of me. Um, he's kind of a boss, but he sort of predates the boss concept. So. And my other answer, again, predates the boss concept, but I think this one more properly fits. And that is Rindle. 
the Red Dragon from Original Adventure on the Atari 2600. I think he qualifies, even though he predates Sinistar, I think I'd have to look that up. Uh, but Rindle is like, he's kind of that version of a boss. First of all, you have to play the harder game settings in order to encounter him. He is the fastest of the dragons, he's the toughest of the dragons. I, I remember defeating him and I was so thrilled with myself. I thought, wow, I didn't think I'd ever actually successfully complete that. So to me, that's, that's a end boss thing. I think that's what Swifto was going for with his question. So for me, the bestest, baddest boss I've beaten is Rindle from the Atari 2600 adventure game. Question three was the hardest one, and I don't have a concrete answer, much like the boss question. If you had to bring back a person from history and play a game with them to convince them how video games are amazing, who would it be and what game would you play? I didn't really have a solid answer for this. I kind of came up with three, and again, they're not strong, each of them, but Swifto said there's no rules, so yeah, I'm going to kind of put in middling three answers here. Uh, number one, and uh, number three, I'll kind of, okay. Number one, recent, recently departed, uh, Roger Ebert. He is famously quoted in the video game world. He was at some event, and somebody was talking to him about what do you think of video games. And he didn't have much great to say about them, primarily because he doesn't think of them as an art form. And... A lot of people in the gaming world are like, what are you talking about, man? What about Bioshock and Last of Us? These are great, you know, video game experiences. I don't know if Last of Us was a around when he made that quote. But it, it is, it, it's one of those things I hear often come up in discussions about games. Roger Ebert once said, they're not an art form. And they're totally an art form. I've got a, I've got a point on that, which I'll make in a separate video. Um, but if I could bring him back and just show him something like The Last of Us. I think, actually, that's probably the game that probably most uh, would be the best argument, because Roger Ebert, being in film and cinema, he understands pacing and plot and character development and what's the overall story. And okay, Pac-Man or Pong, they don't really have that, but The Last of Us does. Like, it's, it's an amazing set piece as far as the look that you know, the vines taking back over the city thing, but it also has a very dramatic story. I wonder, though, if, if Roger Ebert might just look at that and go, it's an excuse. It's not, it's not uh, an art form. It, you know, uh, he was one of my answers I don't feel strongly about, but if, if anybody I would like to make the argument with or have that discussion with, it would be Roger Ebert, so maybe him. Um, person number two... And this is why it becomes a problem. Person number two, I thought, okay, let's not do that. Let's go further back. H.G. Wells. Here's a guy who has spent so much of his life thinking in science fiction terms and going to places that are just not... They wouldn't have been possible in his daily life. And I'd love to be able to show him with a video game... Here's the ability to do space travel, go undersea, travel back in time. There's so many games that kind of address the thing that I, I imagine in his head, much like Leonardo da Vinci, and I was almost going to use him too, there must have been a moment of like, I can see in my head how this would be an interesting thing, but I live in a time when it's just not in the cards. And that must have been frustrating and therefore a part of the art form that both of them you know, contributed to the world. So it'd be great to take them and say, look, you can do it now, and it's it's very commonplace. I think the problem, though, is certainly in the case of Leonardo da Vinci, uh, H.G. Wells would be so flabbergasted by just our world itself with cars and television and the internet and telephones. I think he would be too overwhelmed by all of that to actually understand what the video game part of it is, so it's probably not the greatest uh, response. So that's why Da Vinci didn't even make the list. H.G. Wells kind of does, but again, it's a bit weak. And person number three is sort of an answer to the Roger Ebert thing. 
Uh, I wouldn't mind bringing back Andy Warhol and showing him video games. Because he kind of seems to me to be the kind of artistic person that would appreciate video games as a thing. Not necessarily as an art form, but as a thing. And he's he's been around as recently enough to understand what a television is, so he wouldn't be blown away by everything like H.G. Wells would be. So I think if I could bring back Andy Warhol and show him, I think he'd look at it and he'd, he'd get it. He'd, he'd understand... That's pretty cool. Um, and if, if he went and said, yes, these are art forms, as I'm sure Andy Warhol would, I could then go to the ghost of uh, Roger Ebert and go, see, Andy Warhol says it. What game would I show him? Hmm. There's a lot of them, but I think the one that, I w that, that seems really custom-tailored for Andy Warhol would actually be bound in PlayStation VR. I've done a video about that. That is a trip, that game. That is so out there and weird and awesome. And it is just dripping with imagination and the abstract and just kind of... Yeah, that would be the game. So so there's my three Swift out. They're not very strong, but it's, it's about the best I could come up with for your question. And question number four is similarly hard to answer. <laughs> I'm being channeled into this question so I don't really like it but the question is if your house was on fire and you could only save a family member or a video game console which console would you save and what excuse would you give your dying family member as they're burned in the fire <laughs> which it's so mean to be like narrowed into that as the question or hate it but uh, okay I mean yes it would be the family member over all the consoles but since that's not the question since I have to answer which console would I rescue and what would I tell my family as they're all dying in the flames why I saved it and not them. The console would be the Vectrex. And the reason I would save it, I, as I apologize to my wife and the cats and everybody else who's dying in, in the fire, my <laughs> excuse which doesn't hold up water, but the reason I would save the Vectrex is those... Uh, vector monitors are rare like there is a few attempts out there to kind of reproduce or come up with an alternative or a way to, for Vectrex games to live on but at the time that I'm recording this there aren't anything really solid so the Vectrex is especially with that monitor it's a one-of-a-kind from the 80s and you know what those machines are dying so Every one of them that still operates well, cherish that thing. I do with mine, because it ain't gonna last forever, and when it's gone, it's gone. So, as I'm running away with my Vectrex under my arm from all the fire, and I'm saying why I saved it and nobody else, it's because cause the Vector Monitor's rare, you guys. On the subject of the dying family in flames, um, Dee did have an answer when, when we were going over these questions, thinking it through. Dee was, she had a few suggestions herself. I'm just gonna, she didn't really have a console she would save. I think she did actually. I think it was the PS4 because she loves it more than me. Uh, and as far as the, because I let her die in the fires, um, the the previous question about who would she bring back uh, from history to show video games, uh, she had mentioned Gene Roddenberry, which yeah, I that was a good call. I think uh, I think Gene Roddenberry would really appreciate because again he's recent enough he would understand, and when he died, uh, even the PS3 wasn't around yet, so I think he'd be very impressed at what is possible today, especially. If you stuck his head into a VR headset and played Star Trek Bridge Coup, he would be like, wow, I'm back. It's, it's, I'm back on those sets. So thumbs up to D for uh, coming up with that as her answer and for saving the PS4 and not me because I deserve to die because I wanted the Vectrex to survive and not her. Question number five is very long, so I have to read it out here. You get a phone call from Zeus, the mightiest of all gods. He demands that he play you at a game of your choosing. Should you fail to beat him, he will strike you down with a thunderbolt. But should you win, then you, he would give you godlike powers. What game do you choose? Now, I really like the answer that uh, 
both Swifto and Weebob have given. I'm going to put a link to Weebob's video down below as well because I quite like his response and his what machine would he save in the fire. So he, they have been both more witty than I have on this answer. I'm going to stick with what game am I really good at. And, and even this is not a game I'm fantastic at. I think it's, it was the only one I could come up with though. That's Street Fighter. Um, I'm guessing Street Fighter 2 on the s arcade? No, Super NES. Let's stick with that one. Um, yeah, I, I'm, it would have to be something against somebody, like a one-on-one -on -one scenario. I was going to do Pong, but I think Zeus would probably have no problem with Pong, I guess. Uh, and then I was thinking, well, what multiplayer game are you really good at? That's Star Wars Battlefront, but that's a whole army of people. You're not really one-on-one -on -one in that scenario. So let's uh, stick with a fighting game, and we'll, we'll stick with Street Fighter. Why? Um, I'm decent at it. I'm not by no means on my like professional level or any good. Anybody who's watched my my videos about Street Fighter have realized, yeah, you don't know what the heck you're doing there. But I've been at parties and stuff where people are like, hey, Mr. Mr. Street Fighter player, hey, let's have a game. And I have won against them, so at least I can hold my own. So against Zeus, it would be like, yeah, you don't stand a chance, pal. So that would be why I choose that game, and I would defeat him, and I would attain godlike powers. Also, as a side note, a little bit funny, I hope, uh, I'm a Chun-Li fan, I'm a Chun-Li player, I main Chun-Li in Street Fighter, and uh, it would be kind of funny and ironic and cute for Zeus to get beaten up by a woman, so I just thought there'd be a kind of a poetic justice there. So that's why I would choose Street Fighter 2, we'll go with the Super NES one because it looked like a controller. Um, and yeah, we'll watch Chun-Li beat the crap out of Zeus. Number six is a good one. What question would you hesitate to answer? I've got a few of these, and so does the. Um, I think I'll go with mine first. Now, probably the easiest or, or the least controversial answer, and this will be the one that I stick with, uh, is probably... You ever been to a, somebody's house and you got a bit of time, not quite a party situation, but like, you know, you got some, some time to spare or whatever, and they're like, hey, uh, what kind of music do you listen to? What's your favorite music? I don't really have an answer to that. I mean, I used to like sort of generic pop music from when I was a kid in the 80s, you know, Billy Idol, yeah, but I don't really have a type of music that I like. And honestly, there's good and bad in everything, and I just like music that's good. But I always feel dumb saying that, because it's like, well, that's a cop-out. I mean, give us, give us an... Well, you want, want to hear country and western? To be honest, there's some country western that's actually very good. I'm not a fan of it myself, but I have listened to some stuff. I paid for a song in Rock Band that was country western. I have a couple of country western CDs. Like, I, I reluctantly agree. The genre isn't mine, but there are some good songs out there for country western. So yeah, uh, um, I think I would probably go with like industrial rock or something like that sort of prodigy level stuff. I talked about that when I mentioned Wipeout uh, VR. I like prodigy, but they're kind of older school now. Like I, I, I don't know. So again. When somebody says, what kind of music do you listen to? Or what kind of, what, what's your favorite music? I'm like, oh, as long as it's good. But that, that's, I hesitate to answer that because I don't really like that one. Um, for D, I hope she doesn't mind me saying, uh, it's uh, the question we will sometimes get occasionally is, uh, why don't you have kids? That's not an easy one to answer. Um, it's just a decision we've made and we're more than happy with it. And it's not something a lot of people like to hear. I don't know. That one's that one's a dicey one, but that's her answer. So yeah, it's a. These are questions that I hesitate to answer. Question number seven is which song best suits you? Well, there's a few of these, but my answer is "Comfortably Numb" by Pink Floyd really have always, since I was a kid, when I first heard that song in elementary school, 
that song jumped out at me. It's like, whoa, whoa, that's a... For something they just play on the radio, I was just like, wow, that's that's a really compelling, amazing-sounding song. And over the years, there's a particular part of that song that's always stood out to me. And it kind of it gets me, you know, it emotionally moves me. Um, the line is, when I was a child, I caught a fleeting glimpse out of the corner of my eye. I turned to look, but it was gone. The... It was gone. The dream is... The child has grown, the, the dream is gone. Yeah. That bit, it, to this day, it resonates with me. Like, it's... And I know the song is kind of more, I think, uh, maybe about drug culture and stuff. You know, hey, man, I've become comfortably numb. Just a little pinprick, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I think, um, for myself, although I don't do drugs, I'm kind of like distracted and doing things because there's a lot of stuff that gets me anxious you know I don't want to get negative about it but there's stuff that goes on in the world that makes me worry a lot so I do things like YouTube videos to uh, do something constructive and positive and helpful for myself if nothing else and um, by that token I have managed to keep myself comfortably numb so that song, to get back to the question, is, it, it suits me. It, it really resonates with me. Um, <laughs> Dee's answer is, Psycho Killer, Qu'est-ce que c'est? Question number eight. Now, this is where Swifto gets kind of weird and funny. Uh, he says, uh, have I already answered this question? And <laughs> we, Bob, had, again, check out his reply. He had a, a hilarious, like, Angry, he, he was angry at Swifto for asking that question, so uh, I, I won't spoil it, but yeah, go check out Weebob's reply to that question. How do I ask, ask this question? So we'll go on to question number nine, which is again showing how Swifto is out there in left field, and I guess a world like this would totally suit him. Um, yeah, Swifto was asking, what's your favorite font? That's a, a different one. Uh, for myself, I quite like Arial, and actually D like that one too. It's a very common font, uh, so I'm going to actually go, I mean, if, if I have to quickly throw together something, um, I will use Arial as my font of choice, but I know it, is it at work or is it on my computer? I can't remember. One of the machines that I work with defaults to Calibri, and I always... Like, if I'm typing over it or changing a word or something like that, that is then in Arial, because that's what my selection is. And I kind of, whenever I see it, it's like, you know what, I kind of like Calibri more. So, um, I'm going to say Calibri, and Dee's going to say Arial. And finally, that brings us to question number 10. Name a place in a video game you'd like to visit in real life. This was hard. This was really hard. Now... On the one hand, I mean, there are places in video games that I have visited in real life. I've been to various places that appear in the Assassin's Creed games, like Boston and London, but I'm thinking Swift is talking about fictional worlds, like the Bioshock worlds or whatever. Like, so we're somewhere that only exists in a video game. If you could visit it in real life, where would you like to go? And honestly, I had a hard time with that one. I don't know. Um, I mean... The Star Wars planets, but because they have appeared in video games, but that's because they're video games based on the movies. I think that's a bit of a cheat, so I'm not going to say the Star Wars worlds. Um, and the same with anything else that's based on a license like Star Trek or, I don't know, um, the Road Warrior, not that I would want. Uh, Wee Bob had mentioned he wants to visit somewhere that's sort of post-apocalyptic. I'm like, no, thank you. I have played Fallout 3. I have no desire to go to somewhere like that. Um, it took a while for me to think this through. I, I know Dee had mentioned that, uh, yeah, she was told to go to visit the Bioshock worlds. I think Rapture was kind of her uh, answer, the one that she liked to look up. For me, I had to think long and hard to stick with something only in video games. And something that really resonated, something that I have not... Something that for years I'd be like, oh man, I wish that was somewhere I could actually go. You know, something of value to me. 
The best answer I could come up with, and it's Star Wars-ish. I would like to visit the Tiger's Claw from the Wing Commander games. Uh, in the in Wing Commander, you are aboard a flying battleship and you jump in your fighter and you go and you take off the kill, take on the kill Rathi, and combat ensues and you get to waypoints and that kind of stuff. Um, I've always liked that kind of living on a spaceship, jumping into your fighter and going and taking on the bad guys setting. Uh, original Battlestar Galactica is another one. That that kind of idea of being on a ship, a spaceship that's making its way through the cosmos and sometimes you go and land on a planet and you check stuff out sometimes you're oh my goodness it's the bad guys it's the enemies that's getting our fighters launch and take them out and i love that and so for me since it's video game related and specifically video game related yeah the tiger's claw from uh from the wing commander games i i want to be there and whatever planets we encounter great but I, I want to live, you know, in the. I want to have my my own sh cruise quarters and hang out at the at the bar and chat with the other pilots and just have a good time. And then, if, oh, it's red alert! Let's run to our space uh, to our fighters and get out there and take on the Kilrathi. The Tiger's Claw. That would be my answer of where I'd like to visit in real life. So that's about it. Now, um, Swifter had said, if you'd like to ask him a question, you can do so. I think we have got one, Swift, and it's very innocuous, don't worry. Um, watching you, uh, taking your dog out for a walk when you were talking about this video, and I'm enjoying a nice, a nice little stroll in this strange part of the world. Um, we would like to ask, uh, what's your dog's name, Swifto? There we go. Right. Well, there we go. My video response to Swifto, his 10 gaming-ish questions. Again, in addition to Wee Bob's replies, which are awesome, I'm putting Swiftos down below. Please check it out. And until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.